Hi. Now, in this video, we're going to extend what we did in an earlier video where we found the center of mass for particles which were in a straight line. But now we're looking at particles that are in a plane. And to demonstrate how we work this out, we've got an example here where we've got four particles of mass 2 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 3 kilograms and 6 kilograms and they're situated at these coordinates 0, 3, 2, 4, 4, 2 and 3, 0. Now the centre of mass, a point remember where we can imagine all of the mass to be acting, a point where we could if you like balance these particles. It's going to be a point somewhere within these particles, so I'd expect it to be somewhere around here. Let's just mark that point in. Let's say it's here then, I'll give it coordinates, and the general coordinates we tend to use are x bar and y bar. Now, if all the mass is centered here, that total mass will be the sum of 2 plus 5 plus 3 and 6. So, in other words, that comes to 16 kilograms. Now, when these particles were in a straight line, just imagine we were to drop these particles down onto the x-axis. Then we would have said that that total mass, in this case 16 kilograms, but that total mass multiplied by x-bar would have equaled the sum of the moments of the n particles that we've got. Well, in this case, we've got four particles, but if we had n particles, the sum of the moments would have been mi multiplied by xi, i going from one to however many particles we had, say n particles. Now, when we're working in two dimensions, we just extend this idea. We think of these particles being projected across onto the y-axis so that when we start to take moments about the origin here we would end up with the total moment of the 16 kilograms would be m times y-bar and it would be equal to the sum of all the moments of our particles about the x-axis which would be their individual masses multiplied by their y-coordinates. And if we've got n particles that would be i going from 1 to n. So essentially it's much the same kind of idea. We're just working in another dimension. Now when I work out problems like this I tend to cut down the working by combining the two ideas together. I say that the total mass, which in this case is 16 kilograms, it would have been just multiplied by x bar earlier. And I would have said that it was 16 times x bar equals the sum of the moments about the y axis, that's the end here. So it would have been, say, 2 multiplied by its distance to the y axis, which would have been 0. 2 multiplied by 0 plus and then I would have gone on to the 5 kilogram mass that would have been 5 times the distance to the y-axis which would have been 2 5 times 2 and then plus 3 times the distance to the y-axis which would have been 3 times 4 and finally we would add the 6 kilogram mass times its distance to the y-axis, which would be 6 times 3. But I'm going to combine both ideas together because not only am I going to do 16 times x-bar, I'm going to do 16 times y-bar. So if I was to put that underneath here, I could now write this as a column vector, 16 times x bar y bar. And if I repeat the process, we've got the 2 kilogram mass multiplied by this distance down here, which would be the y coordinate, 2 times the 3. So if I was to extend this bracket down here, I've got 2 times the 3. So we get a column vector like this. Similarly, I've got 5 kilograms now being multiplied by this vertical distance, which is 4. 
So it'd be five times two, four if I wrote that in one go. Well, you can see that the next one would be three times four, two. So put that in there, three times four, two. And lastly, we've got six times three, zero. So we extend that down there. And that's what I would normally write first off. So combining both ideas there. So if we work this out now, we've got 16 times x bar y bar equals, all I need to do now is just work out what the total of the top and bottom lines are. If we multiply out the top, we've got 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 5 twos are 10, plus 3 fours are 12, plus 6 threes are 18. And that's all over 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 5 fours, 20, plus 3 twos are 6, and 6 zeros is 0. Work that one out, you've got 16 times x bar y bar equals, well, the top line comes to a total of 40 and the bottom line comes to a total of 32. So we've got 40, 32. Divide now throughout by 16 and you end up with x bar y bar equals 40 divided by 16, which is 2 and a half, 2.5, and 32 divided by 16, well that's 2. And you could leave it as a column vector, or obviously if you wanted it as a coordinate, x bar, y bar, then all we need to do is just write it as 2.52. Either way, leave it up to you to decide which way you want to present it. And it's a good idea just to look at your answer, check to see whether it looks a sensible result, that it's within these particles. Two and a half units in from the origin and two units up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now, I've got an example that um, I would certainly encourage you to try because... In this example, I've kept all the particles in what we call the first quadrant. All the coordinates are positive values. But these particles could be scattered in other quadrants where some of the coordinates are negative values. Well, it doesn't make a difference. You can do exactly the same as what we did here. Here it is. And you can see we've got three particles, two kilograms, three kilograms, and five kilograms situated at these points minus one, minus two, two, three, and three minus one. So see if you can find the center of mass of this system here. Come back when ready and uh, I'll run through the solution. Okay, well, let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, the center of mass has got to be somewhere within these particles. So I'm just going to put it here just for the time being. Let's say it's got its coordinates then x bar, y bar. We need to find out what the total mass is acting at this point. So that's going to be 2 plus 3 plus 5 kilograms, a total of 10 kilograms. So if I'm taking moments then about the x and y axis, I'm going to have that total mass 10 being multiplied by x bar y bar. And that's going to equal 2 times minus 1 minus 2. So we've got 2 multiplied by the column vector minus 1 minus 2. And then plus, let's take the 3 kilogram mass now. So that's 3 multiplied by the column vector 2, 3. And finally, plus the 5 kilogram mass being multiplied by the column vector 3 minus 1. So what have we got then? Well, we've got 10 multiplied by x bar y bar equals, and working out this top line gives us minus 2 plus 6 plus 15 and then multiplying out the bottom line gives us minus 4 plus 9 minus 5. And so we have 10 multiplied by x bar y bar 
equals grouping this up we end up with 19 on the top and as for the bottom line we get 0. So dividing by 10 gives us x bar y bar then is at the position vector 1.90 well, as far as coordinates are concerned x bar y bar is at 1.90 now when we look at the sketch here you can see that obviously it doesn't act at this point here 1.9 units in say from the y-axis but y bar is zero so it's actually not here but on the x-axis okay well I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about finding the center of mass when you've got a system of particles in two dimensions